Hello everybody, I hope you're having a wonderful day and today I would like to share with you guys my final thoughts on the Herman Knives Let's not fuck this up on the pronunciation The Vespertilio Vespertilio 85 I think that's the model number, Vespertilio 85 Um, again, I'm not 100% sure on if I pronounced that name right, doesn't matter, whatever, not a big deal But, this uh, just to break the ice is an expensive knife. Yes. Um, I never thought I would be able to purchase something like this. I did buy this unit off nafsale.com. Um, I think I got a pretty sweet deal on it seeing as you can't get these anymore at the moment. I'm looking on Polish custom knives website where, uh, Herman knives sells their knives, different models and stuff like that um and it just says that there's none available uh whether it's this variation or some of the other jazzied up versions i think i found this specific one uh this one actually you know what now that i'm looking at it i don't think that this is the exact same one i'm i have my laptop over here off to the side the one on my screen looks like it's raw titanium the the scales at least this is clearly anodized to a beautiful bluish gray i don't even know what voltage this was uh anodized at I, i've been messing around myself with anodizing and a couple different finishes but i just i don't know how it was done it's just so completely just consistent and it's beautiful um it's yeah, this knife is absolutely ridiculous so with that being said the plainer version the non-anodized version it when it was available it was 690 dollars and 24 freaking cents that uh that's a good chunk of money <laughs> to uh have spent on a knife i uh i got a good deal on it uh i believe <laughs> Um, so let's go through a couple little specs that they do have provided here, which is definitely nice. Uh, everything is converted to for the most part. So blade material on this is actually M398. Now I've experienced a lot of regular Bowler M390. This Bowler M398, I couldn't tell you the difference. I'm not the guy. Um, I have no way to compare the two and uh, it's safe to say that there is no difference between the two at least in regular use uh yes i have used this it was my edc for a couple days at work <laughs> and it was uh it was fun carrying it around i think i definitely played with it a lot more than i did actually using it and handed it off to a couple people that uh made me sweat just by them looking at it <laughs> but um with that all being said, there's a couple little things here that they do provide. Uh, the HRC, which some people care, some people don't, but they have here that it's 62. That's good. As far as I know, that's what all M390, M398 should be at, 62 to 63. Um, if this is M398, um, maybe could have been higher. I'm not too sure how that extra eight something works. But um, if you do, let me know. I, 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 I love learning about this kind of stuff. I'm not a know-it-all. Uh, I just, I'm willing to take in information, things like that. So if you know, let me know. Um, but I mean, that sounds about right for, for this material. That's definitely what it should be around. Uh, titanium grade five, the backspacer, also titanium grade five. Everything is grade five titanium. One of the highest grades is titanium that is available um which is pretty darn sweet another little interesting thing about this that i wouldn't have known until i actually read this uh like a week or so ago and i'm glad that i did because i bought this knife not really knowing a whole lot about it uh which is honestly really stupid of me uh but you know it is what it is so this knife has a ceramic ball bearing system that is handmade i don't exactly know what that means like is he making the actual ceramic balls or or what i 
<laughs> I don't freaking know. But um, that's pretty crazy. Uh, what that means is that if you take apart this knife, little ceramic beads will be flying everywhere. And when I did my unboxing, I didn't notice this till after I, I finished up my video and shut my mouth for a second because my jaw was still just wide open from how beautiful this thing is. Um, I looked at one of the little baggies and I'm like, oh, there's an empty ass bag that was sent along. I didn't realize that there are, there's a full set of ceramic balls in there. Tiny, tiny little freaking beads. The, the actual bearings themselves, they're loose. So um, I haven't taken this knife apart. I mean, there's no reason for me to. But um, I still have this itch to want to take it apart. I just, I, I need probably like a silicone mat, not this. Because uh, they will just glide off and will be gone forever in my garage somewhere here uh, so i definitely need a silicone mat or just a, a safer space to to take this knife apart for sure um, i will say that it sounds pretty delicate it sounds like a very delicate process and even in their uh they have a little card of authenticity it was talking well not the card of authenticity it was another little card that came with it and it was basically just saying don't take the knife apart if you don't need to um like you will mess it up probably it should be really easy to take apart their instructions to maintain such a knife is uh essentially to put some really high grade lubrication down in there um and then spray out the rest of it with um with canned air so whatever lubricant that the bearings themselves retain because of surface area should be just enough for this knife to perform as it's intended to. So that's a little fun fact there. Um, the lock face is a tungsten carbide lock leaf, they're calling it. And um, all they're talking about is just this uh, inset liner here. Assuming it's titanium and looking at it in there, yeah, there's a giant detent ball. That is like one of the biggest uh, detent balls I've seen on a knife. And uh, it makes sense. The The tension on this is ridiculous and it's, it feels awesome. There's only one other knife in my collection that is anywhere close to this flipping action. It being a dedicated flipper. And I'll show you guys that in a second. But at like a fifth the price. <laughs> Seriously, yeah, it's still available, actually. Um, what else? Oh, I messed up on my unboxing when I said I think the pivot is a T15 or T10. It's actually a T20, and it comes with a tiny little titanium tool. So I think that's pretty cool. I'll probably never use it. And the weight is 3.39 ounces. Overall length is 7.36. Blade length is... 3.11 inches uh, fold length close length is 4.25 and it says blade width is 1.06 so I have a little scale here just cuz sweet this thing is uh for how much knife you are getting I think this is right on the money because it is definitely, in my opinion, now actually experiencing and using it and actually like carrying it a bunch, it's very comfortable. But um, this definitely feels like a medium knife. Uh, you cannot comfortably or safely, you just, you just don't even bother trying to uh, rest on that flipper tab there. It is very soft, very well machined and slick. Um, it's just not a good idea. Stay in the single position back here that is where it's most comfortable you can definitely do one of these guys and you know cut like that like a utility blade in pinch grips it's also very comfortable like this like that it's pretty darn nice um and i think that's really the only kind of information that um is provided here looking at their they actually have a little picture of how their ball bearings look 
and it looks like a multi-role ball bearing system. Um, a lot of other knives have them, but they're already like pre-made and it's just, you know, buy them in bulk. Um, but they're set, they're not loose. So that looks like it would be a absolute nightmare to, uh, to get right for sure. Uh, and I don't know if I even bothered mentioning that there are a couple other retailers. Like I was poking around trying to look for what this knife is actually worth, how much this thing freaking costs. And I think it was on Arizona Custom Knives. Um, they had something that looked similar to this, but it was in regular M390 and it was like a thousand dollars. So I'm like, what is going on? I looked at the listing. Um, I don't think that one was available anymore. I'll check after this video. Uh, just out of curiosity i don't think it's available anymore but it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense it's safe to say that what i have here floats around you know comfortably the 700 dollars price point around that if if i'm seeing a plain thai version of it for 690 and based on a couple of the other variants that are plain versus ones that are exactly the same just with an anodizing job to it that it's an extra like 35 to almost 50 dollars of an increase i think it's safe to say that an extra uh 10 dollars would suffice so uh this is around a 700 dollar knife which is absolutely insane um and all right let's break out some knives hopefully don't get it too close to this thing right here but some knives here to help you guys see what this thing is really all about, which I definitely wish I knew how to like, you know, visualize dimensions and stuff from on paper to something that's physical. Cause I thought this thing was going to be a little bit bigger. Here we have Spyderco PM2. We have a Spyderco native, definitely about the same uh, no excuse me it is a little bit more handle length than the native five have some bench mates here osborne 940 Got a bug out about the same length as a bug out about the same about a handle length cutting edge Eh, because of the different blade shape, it's eh, it's there and then it's not. It's, it's hard to tell because of a drop point versus a worn cliff. This is <laughs> this is definitely a worn cliff. This is very very worny looking. We have a Dimco eighty twenty point five, and a last but not least is a Civivi Elementum. So yeah, this thing is probably most like mostly going to resemble and kind of feel in hand of what like a bench made bug out or the elementum but there was one other knife in my collection that i wanted to share really quick this is a knife that i've shown many times and this was actually my first uh, ever wee knife uh, this specific variation is the flamed tight clip bronze accents of all the hardware titanium of course bead blasted blade and shred carbon fiber polished scale. Um, this is the most gaudy version, in my opinion, of this knife, the Wii Kite Fin. I have maybe three dedicated flippers in my collection because I'm just not the biggest fan of uh, only flipper knives. But in my experience, flipping this knife as much as I have now reminds me of this this is a uh i think sub 150 dollar knife um i would look it up right now but i don't want this video to be much longer than it really needs to be i haven't even gotten to the freaking knife at this point but if you're curious of what this knife kind of feels like you can try out the action with a better flipper tab in my opinion this has jimping, this does not. And we'll get into that. So that um, tight fin is just super, super comfortable to flip continuously. But the smoothness is, is on another level. The 
it's it's so weird because like i and i haven't put any uh lubrication this has been just as is from the individual that i purchased it from and it hasn't changed much so i definitely do appreciate the consistency um so the, the breakaway is what i am you know relating to that kite fin it's just it's so snappy it's so clean it's it's there and then it's out um it's i'm just i'm at a loss for words to really compare and just really speak on this item because the action is i don't have a lot of flipper knives right so i don't have a whole lot to compare it to but out of all the ones that i have experienced the one that feels the most like it is that wee kite fin over there and um that's uh that's pretty much it that's the, that's really the only resemblance that the the similarities stop there uh this knife is definitely on another planet in comparison to everything that i have in my collection the way the blade is finished the scales the hardware how they're polished here in the back too um it has some you know light scuffing but when i do disassemble this i have some like watch and jewelry polish that i can definitely take that to that if i feel like i need to the pocket clip it definitely uh fits the part for sure the design is very very clean and there's actually this little relief area that was milled underneath that i don't even think i realized i'm not too sure why that's there i don't know um but it goes in and out of the pocket extremely well it's not sharp looks like it would be um, there are a lot of other knives that i've experienced where they're shaped similarly or the construction is of a uh, heavily milled titanium clip and at the very apex of the tip of that clip is usually kind of kind of jagged a little a little scratchy there this this isn't this was definitely knocked down for sure and it just it just looks so good on it it really does and again functionally speaking it's great taking a look at this backspacer here um it's just a little design thing there going on i don't mind it not a big deal uh, looking at the backspacer in comparison to the rest of the scales the backspacer is actually just the slightest bit proud and looking at it it almost it looks like it's consistent all the way through but at certain angles because of the way that the scales are sculpted it almost looks like the backspacer protrudes more and more as you get closer to the end there and speaking about the butt of this knife here, this is actually a little sharp. And I did experience that because um, I have large, extra large size hands. So holding this knife, yeah, it sits right in there, as you can see. And, um, you know, my thumb lands there. That's where it could. If this was further down, it would just, it would, it, this looks really weird. And this knife is it's just gonna fall out of my freaking hand. So I'm holding it the way that I feel secure, like I would hold any other knife. And yeah, that's sitting right in there. Uh, when I go to put this in my pocket after uh, using this and you know, cutting some stuff really quick, you know, flip it out, make my cuts, disengage, fold it, put it away. And when I go to stick it in my pocket, my palm kind of pushes it down. So I guide the clip, it clips, the clip starts to slide down. And the entire time, my palm is putting pressure on the butt of that knife. And yeah, that, uh, it's a little sharp. Honestly, like, I, I know that it, it looks just as finished as everything else. But yeah, that's, uh, for me, this is a little, just a smidgen too sharp. And I can definitely fix that. But in the process of fixing the issue for me, it would essentially ruin the aesthetic of this knife. And I wouldn't be able to to replicate that or make everything else look the same. So it's just eh, it's just something that I'd have to just live with in my time owning this knife. Now, I don't know if this is going to be a keeper. As far as I know, I'm fully intending to keep it and have it as a user because it's a wonderfully useful knife. Uh, especially because of that blade shape. It's ridiculously thin. comes to a super super thin edge um like wow that is ridiculously thin like i could probably just like snap it like that with my own fingers but 
I'm telling you guys, there is nothing in my collection. No Spyderco, no Benchmade. My one experience with an Open L cannot compare to how slicey this thing is. And to my knowledge, this still has a factory edge. It's so freaking tiny, I can't even see the scratch lines on it. I'm pretty sure the... You know what? Uh, I'm pretty sure this is the factory edge. I don't think the previous owner put an edge on there because from what he stated, he didn't own it long enough to really put it through any sort of actual use to where he would notice a decline in the performance of this edge. Um, me personally, I haven't used it a whole lot either because uh, I've also been testing out a bunch of other stuff that I bought similarly, or I guess the same, uh, same time span. But um, this thing is just, it's absolutely insane. That's like, that's the only real word that I can use to describe this thing. Any little issues or gripes that I had with it? Um, looking at the screws back here, right? For, to hold in the backspacer, there are three of them. Could have been two, right? Right? Why have more hardware? Why make it more difficult on yourself? It could have been two. Um, could have been, you know, one back here, one up there. Um, or have the backspacer shaped a certain way where it sets in to the scales and it pinches it together. So maybe it could have actually been accomplished with one. I don't know. I'm not a knife designer. I definitely could be one day. Um, but the way that these pins here are constructed, the actual hardware itself, they're not flush, right? They, they are the slightest bit of proud, and it almost feels like really premium braille, if anything. But taking a look at this one, so this is actually a part of, let's see, that is a part of the inset liner there. And this actually sticks out, I kid you not, almost twice as much as these other ones here. And I think it might even be a little bit wider. I'm, I'm not too sure why, but it just, it sticks out a lot and you feel it. Um, so <laughs> I don't know if, if Braille is actually uh, where they have uppercase and lowercase, but just bear with me here. This feels like lowercase braille, and this feels like uppercase braille. That is probably the the stupidest thing I've ever said, but that is the easiest way for me to explain it. Um, that's just what I'm feeling there. Um, but this engagement, just messing around with this thing, it's just super, super light. The lockup is ridiculously solid for how flippy and just how free-flowing this knife feels with almost zero resistance. Now, it is... It's not snug, but there's there's nothing there. You don't feel anything. And even on other really well broken in premium knives that run on ceramic ball bearings, and I'm talking really well broken in, they don't do this. They don't feel like this. So that's insane. You know, maybe that is because of the handmade ball bearing system and it, them being loose bearings. Maybe the bearings have more surface area. Maybe they're able to glide better. I'm not too sure, but um, there is more to this knife than I could ever really speak on properly and to do it justice. So I'm just gonna leave it there. Um, do I believe that this is worth as much as it is? I don't know. I, I really don't know. This is a... Uh, no regular person has any reason to buy anything like this. This is 110% enthusiast stuff. Like, if you are um, a engineer and you love crazy details in such a simple item um, and you value those kinds of things and you have deeper pockets, then yeah, you'd probably really like this thing. But for a normal individual like me, uh, even being anywhere near this thing, I, I have no reason to be anywhere near this thing. Um, I'm going to treat it kind of like how I do a lot of my other knives. It's going to go in rotation. I'll probably use it maybe once a week, if anything. Maybe once in a while I'll pick it up just to flick it and, you know, uh, just 
you know, get the feeling back of how ridiculously smooth and how snappy that detent is. Um, but just this thing is it's finished on another level that I can't understand. And not yet, at least. I will. Eventually. I will be buying another Herman knife. Um, chances are I'll probably end up having to pay actual full price for it because I, I want to experience more of this. I definitely do. I want to be able to one day give a, a proper, a real actual review instead of me stumbling over my words like some fool. Um, if you guys did actually enjoy this video and me just screwing around with this thing at the end of it all, um, go ahead and like this video. If you guys aren't subscribed already, go ahead and subscribe if you guys like this type of content and you are interested in receiving notifications about when I new, when I post new stuff, go ahead and turn on the notification bell so you are notified of new stuff. With that all being said, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and take care.